things called faces and this is the origin of, of these names vertices, edges and faces they are from geometry of, of solids and not, not from graph theory itself so Euler's formula says, says that for every solid what, what holds is that the number of vertices plus number of faces is number of, of edges plus two this is nothing, nothing else this is some equality for solids and so maybe I, sh I should make clear why there is some connection between between these geometric geometric solids and between planar graphs because um, I don't think it's it's very obvious so what we can do we can assign to to every solid a planar graph and in opposite way to every um, let's say sufficient planar graph not not every is possible but but almost to to every every graph what would we will consider our really two connected planar graphs uh, meaning that um, we, we don't want our solids to look something something like like this that there would be some something hanging and uh, would be like separated like like this yeah, so uh, what we want to what we want to have is, is some some connectivity that it will it will have some some kind of, of shape shape like this. So, so this won't be allowed. But I I don't want to to speak about this this notion right now. But like almost almost every every planar graph is associated with with solid. So there is some kind of of good connection between between them. And the thing is that we can. Uh, what we can do is to is to modify the the solid slightly and put put these vertices on, on the surface of a, of a sphere. And uh, there is there is no problem with this because uh, we are not really considered about about exact lengths or angles or things like this. We just would like to to keep the structure. Yeah? So we would like to keep topology of of the object. Uh, topology means uh, it's some kind of, of Science, which does not, um, which is not so interested about about specific lengths or or shapes, it just wants to to consider things that preserve structure of the object. So we can do anything with the object, but if the structure is preserved, so transformations like this preserving structure are considered um, topological, are, are things that are studied in topology. So, for example, let me consider. Mm, to to objects which, from geometrical point of view, they are completely different. Yes. Uh, sorry. And it's a square and a circle. They are completely different from from the topological point of view. But from the topological point of view, what you can do is is to take your take your square and push these corners inside and make it make it round so by pushing you can then make it make it round yeah. on the other hand if if you would have a square with, with some gap inside uh, or a circle with, with some gap inside it's not possible to somehow push this inside and to remove this this small hole completely so no matter how, how you push it how you how, how make it smaller and smaller it will always remain there like something something like this so I will, I will push it and it will remain still still there small but but still remains there so these these two objects are not equivalent from from the topological topological point of view yeah, so we are just considering topology. So what we are going to do is to is to take this take this solid, and we are going to put it on on a sphere. So in this case, what I can do, I can I have four vertices. One one is from the behind, and now I connect everything to to everything. So, so some some kind of object like this. Ah, huh? uh, tetrahedron. So so this is this is tetrahedron. On a sphere, and clearly every every solid can be placed on the sphere, and then faces will will be some some uh, parts of of the surface of of this of this sphere, and now we are going to to create some some mapping which is going to to map this sphere 
minus one point, which is the north pole here, to, to a plane. In such a way that the structure will be preserved. So, if we would like to, to map some point on the sphere, we take a line from the north pole to, to, the, to this point here, and somewhere it intersects the plane. So, it looks like here, and this is already under the plane. And now we map this this point here to, to to the plane or in the opposite way we can take we can take the point back to the sphere. So what we are going to do is to use this mapping to to take the drawing of, of this solid on the sphere to the plane. And what we obtain is a plane graph because no no drawing can appear. So we will have something like this for example and uh, this vertex will appear here and this vertex will appear here and now we take this this edge and it will somehow appear here maybe it will be uh, curves or something like like that and then we take we take this vertex and it appears here and this vertex um, is actually maybe appearing somewhere outside and what we will obtain is a planar drawing of, of this of this thing yeah so what we obtain is a planar graph with vertices, edges and faces, which clearly correspond to this to this original picture here. Yeah, so so this is this is kinda nice correspondence. Of course we cannot map this, this one point here because somehow like uh, th there is no line we could we could take to the plane. So somehow it could be it could be imagined that, that this north pole is mapped to the infinity somewhere outside of the plane. So we won't map it not possible. But we don't really care about it, we don't, we don't need to, to map this this particular point. So what we have is, is a mapping that, that if we if we take a solid we can transform it to planar graph, if we take a planar graph we can transform it to a solid. And also there is another nice thing is that every face can be out, can be outer be can be the the graph can be redrawn in in such a way that every face will become an outer face and why so we have some planar some planar graph like like this drawn in the in the plane so we take this transformation and put it on the sphere and this outer face, like as I said, like the north pole would be would be mapped somewhere to infinity. So this outer face will contain the north pole. Yeah, so so it may may I don't know appear somewhat like this. And now what we can take is is this sphere and we can we can rotate it somehow in such a way that north pole will be moved to to any other face. So now we obtain a, another another drawing on the sphere and the north pole is, is placed somewhere else and now we, we can we can uh, draw it again on the on the plane and what, what we obtain here is um, something which is something like this and now these two vertices will be, will be inside. Yeah, so it's, it's a different drawing and now this particular face is outer. Yeah, so so this is this is a nice a nice and an extremely simple simple corollary of, of, of that. Yeah. So so this is this is one thing and okay so so let me let me conclude because because uh, this this lecture was, was pretty pretty long already so, so let me conclude with one nice things and these calls uh, these things are uh, called uh, pattern pattern solids. So, so you surely, surely know them because they are somehow the the most regular uh, geometric solids, most most regular. And what does it mean? It it means that every every face is of the same size, and every Every vertex has the same degree. 
Yeah, so we would like to we would like to investigate these these quantum solids. So so you sure you know them. One one of them is is cube. I can draw it as a planar graph like like this. I have four vertices. Other four vertices are inside, and I connect them like this. And there are also also other graphs. One of them is um, you already seen it. Is is tetrahedron. Yeah, and the the other the other uh, one is um, something called um, octahedron, which is which is basically something like like two pyramids glued glued together. So we have something something like this. We can actually actually find much much nicer drawing of of this graph here. And uh, it's it's actually not not so difficult to to see it. So maybe maybe I will redraw it. But um, let me first to to talk about about some slightly more related, slightly different, but still related thing. And this is this is the thing about about dual graphs. So what what it's quite nice that to every graph and its drawing there is some another planar graph associated. So if we have a uh, a graph, have a planar graph with a drawing, drawing, then we can we can construct to some graph towards noted G star, which is dual of 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 this drawing. And so so let me let me give you some some example. So imagine that I have a graph which looks like this. Uh, maybe maybe this example is too huge, but okay. So so what I can do is I can put one vertex to to each face of this graph. Uh, so we have three, we have uh, four faces, the outer one, and now I will connect two faces by an edge if they have common edge on on the neighborhood. So these two will be connected because they sharing edge. These two will be connected. These two will be connected, and uh, these two won't be connected, for example, because they are just sharing the vertex and no edge. And now uh, this face will be connected to to this one. So if we would just need information about connections, it would be everything. But uh, we are going to construct multi graphs, which will have uh, multiple, maybe maybe multiple, multiple edges between. Uh, between uh, some pairs of vertices. So in this case, we will obtain four four edges going from here, and um, also we will obtain one edge which goes which goes from here to here. This is this is called loop because it's going from from one vertex to itself, and it's for these edges. These, these edges are called called bridges because uh, somehow, somehow if we remove this edge the graph will split to two parts and bridges are always shared from both sides by one face so this face and this face for a bridge is, is the same yeah, so so this is this is calculated by by two edges here and also this will be connected here uh, sorry sorry for the uh, it will be connected here, and uh, I don't really care about this. Uh, but, uh, this, like this. So this, this example is, is kind of huge, but I, I think it, it gives it gives a good good idea how how it it works. So so yeah, something something like that. And uh, it's quite simple to see that the dual will be always a planar graph itself. So in our case, we have. Um, a graph which which uh, graphs like this and they they will have actually nice 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 duels so if I consider dual of, of tetrahedron I will have four faces each connected to each other which is exactly tetrahedron itself so if I do the dual operation here and tetrahedron is again tetrahedron now like this in the case of of the cube we obtain something else 
Yeah, because cube has six faces but eight vertices, so the graph has to be different. 